This week on Culture Q, a very special edition episode. We chat with John Cameron Mitchell for an in-depth conversation on the 20th anniversary of Hedwig and the Angry Inch. It is Annie Lawani here, as we said, for the very special episode of Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Now, Jonah Bleckman got to sit down with John Cameron Mitchell, a very talented director, actor, producer, so many things that obviously it has been 20 years since the movie, and we are recapping everything since then. I am so thrilled to have the incomparable John Cameron Mitchell. John, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is 20 years since the film Hedwig and the Angry Inch came out. Don't you know me, Kansas City? Hedwig is about an East German boy named Hansel. He was actually quite comfortable with his being a feminine boy with his gender, but he's forced into a gender, what I call abnegation surgery, which is like giving up your power to somebody else because his government says, well, you can't marry an American GI who's a guy unless you're a woman. And the definition of a woman is no penis. So the character after a botched operation is left with the angry inch and it becomes a metaphor for what is taken from you and what you do with it. So the character ends up in a trailer park, divorced, forced into this womanhood that they never wanted. And then they discover drag and performance, which is a different thing, and becomes a singer and a very original one. Has a lover named Tommy who can't handle Hedwig's gender and runs away, steals her songs and becomes a big rock star. So it's all about Hedwig who seems like very much a victim and acts like a victim, trying to find some wholeness. What was the impetus for such an iconic character and story? Plato's Symposium was the origin of love myth where we were all powerful at the beginning of time and we had two faces, four arms, four legs, and we were so powerful that the gods had felt the need to cut us in half because we were too big for our britches. And we are always seeking that other half. And the myth is quite modern. There's queer couples, there's trans. And then I was developing the piece while I was hanging out at this club called Squeezebox, which was a punk rock drag queen party in New York. Stephen Trask, the composer, and I workshopped the character of Hedwig, who was originally a smaller character because Tommy, the lover, used to be the main character. He was more like me. And Hedwig was based on Helga, who was my brother's babysitter, who was also a prostitute on the side. So we realized she had another job. The off-Broadway stage production began in 1998. The film didn't come out till 2001. What was the process like to even get the play into film form. The Sundance Labs really were indispensable. You know, they help with the script, they help you direct. I had never directed on film before. I educated myself and my cinematographer, Frank DeMarco, and my editor, Andrew Marcus, my producer, Christine Bachon, were highly experienced, and they all taught me, you know, what I didn't know. I knew about actors, I knew about structure, writing-wise, but, I, you know, the camera was still new to me, even though I, I loved certain filmmakers. We luckily had a lot of time to prepare, which I don't think I could have done it without that. I didn't know what it meant to shoot, so we bit off more than we could chew. But that also leads you somewhere where other people haven't gone. What about your casting? You know, a lot of people were in the musical. We did audition, even though they were very overqualified. Actually, James Franco was one of the runners up. He actually gave me a hard on in the audition <laughs> it was the only time that ever happened and that didn't get the role <laughs> didn't get the role he was too good looking the film had an amazing festival life it got honored with so many wonderful awards including best director and the audience award at sundance in my year was a very good year you know it was like alfonso cuaron who did e tu mama tambien at that time christopher nolan had just done memento david lynch i saw around mulholland drive you know it was really fun to do that the film itself was a bit of a flop hedwig has continued throughout time going back to the play after the film the Play finally got to Broadway. When it came out, Broadway was not on the table. Broadway was too conservative for us. The Oscars would have been too conservative for us. We did get a Golden Globe nomination. I don't know how that happened. And then the world changed a bit and we're on Broadway. And that was the first time Stephen and I ever actually made money. But people do it all over the world and they do it, you know, it's not a giant money maker in, in the way that, you know, even Avenue Q is because you can do those in college and high school. High schools are scared of Hedwig, you know, they're like, oh, trans, you know, in their mind. 
Though I never thought of the character as trans. I think of the character as certainly on a gender journey. The character, I wouldn't call someone forced into an operation a trans story. You know, that's more of a victim of the patriarchy story. But the character, through performance and through drag, finds a kind of, and then lets go of the drag at the end, right? And walks into the world naked as if to say, this is me, you know? I don't fit into any of your boxes. What was it like for you at that time being on Broadway? I mean, you had Tay Diggs and Michael C. Hall and Andrew Rannells, so many wonderful artists. I really enjoyed it. I was definitely scared during rehearsal. You get just like, oh, can I physically do this? And then mentally I realized it was more of a mental block. It was, you know, I hadn't performed on stage in 15 years. And, it, and then once the audience was there, the tears fell and I was, I felt home. I love Hedwig and everything it's brought to me. I'm most proud of my musical podcast series, Anthem Homunculus, which is now out for free, starring me and Glenn Close, Patty Lupone, Cynthia Erivo. A wonderful form, you know, is a fictional podcast because you can really get these great actors because they, they can do everything in a couple of days. And it was, you know, a 30 song musical over 10 episodes I wrote with uh, Brian Weller. Half of it is autobiographical, is my life, it's the first half of my life. And the second half is a what if I never left my small town? And what if I had a brain tumor that I had no money to treat? What did that answer for you? You know, I've had death around me my whole life. You know, my lover died. Both my parents are gone. This fall, so many people I knew passed. Three friends died in one day. Mm. Anthem Homunculus was more about the death of my boyfriend from drugs than about my reported future cancer or anything, but we're all gonna get something that's gonna take us out. So we better be ready to go when we go. Bringing it back around a little bit more to Hedwig, is there anyone that you would love to see do that role? Bowie would have been amazing. I'd like to see Little Richard do it. We actually asked Patty LaPone to do it. And? Well, we closed before she could answer, but she was intrigued because she was a, she'd come a lot to the show. She loved the show. We've had a little, Perfuffle in Australia, which bummed me out. There was a queer guy who was going to play it, and a non binary trans activist was like, This cis person can't play this role, it's a trans role. And it's like, What are you talking about? This is not a trans statement in any way. This mm. is about someone who's mutilated against their will. And to limit that, well, who's to say, Are you not trans enough? I'm non binary. Am I, can I not play it? Hedwig has earned, you know, a cult status. It is one of the most beloved queer classics for our community. Why do you think it has penetrated so strongly and held? We were making it for us and our friends. You know, social media has its uses and its abuses. You can quickly like something, and it's a different thing from, you know, a friend saying, check this out, or you meeting someone and they tell you about it, and you go, and it becomes personal, you know, and the connection is stronger. It's sincere, you know, and whatever moves you, moves you. What is the continuing life for Hedwig and all your partnership with Stephen? Stephen and I wrote a song last year that's in video form now called Nation of One. So check that out. It's on my album, New American Dream. I'm wary of conspiracy theories when the simplest answer is true. My second film, Short Bus, has its own cult, you know, which is nice. It's been out of print for a long time. So Oscilloscope is putting it back out again in theaters, but also Blu-ray and streaming eventually. So you're a sex therapist, but you've never had an orgasm? <laughs> Look, I know I can help you have an orgasm and maybe you can help me like have a real human interaction with someone. Back then in Short Bus, we didn't have a too much pushback. We were hoping for a bit more actually. Today, I don't know if we could make it because there might be objections. Nowadays, unfortunately, because of Me Too, which needed to happen for sure. There's, you know, a panic about sex, especially among young people. So our underlying American Puritanism, which has always been there, used to come out in religious right-wing versions. Now it's kind of coming up a little bit in the more left-wing version, i.e. if anyone is having sex, someone's being exploited. Other kinds of culture just shying away from sex completely. Not all of them, you know, there's some TV shows, but even just the idea of nudity is scary now. I was doing a show recently and the young people are all scared to show their ass or whatever. I come from a different time where I was naked and everything. And it was good for me to get past some of my Catholic guilt. So Short Bus was part of that story. 
But now it might be inappropriate. Me being a white cis male, I mean, directing a, a Asian woman having an orgasm. You know, it's like, how dare I? It's not my story. It's not, not my orgasm to tell. But we were all in it together in a loving way. And we worked, the actors and I worked for two and a half years before we shot. So recently when the young people were like, I'm really afraid of my ass being seen. And like, I was 26 once too. And I was very happy that my ass was recorded at that time. Exactly. Meanwhile, I'll get my tired 58 year old ass out for the scene if it's going to make it look more real, which I did. <laughs> we'll take your ass at any age. Not any lighting, though. <laughs> I found him incredibly hot. Thank you so much for tuning into this very special episode of Culture Q. Also, big shout out to John Cameron Mitchell for having an amazing conversation with Jonah about Hedwig and the Angry Inch celebrating over 20 years. If you want to catch the film, it's streaming right here on Reverie for a limited time. Andy signing out. See you real soon.